Hey, Mike here. So, fun fact, this is actually the third version of this discussion on the Trinity. That's because this metaphor just keeps expanding and has not broken down for me yet. We're going over what many call the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. For many Christians and non-believers alike, the Trinity as a concept is confusing. And for people of other Abrahamic faiths that worship the one true God, such as Judaism and Islam, it does sound like straight up blasphemy or even idol worship in some cases. Uh, this is because it's not explicitly stated in any English copy of scripture, but it is shown. If you can't see it, let's play a game, specifically a video game. Keep in mind that the ancient Greek and Abrahamic or er, Aramaic languages did not deal with events outside of everyday life. In our modern age and modern language, video games seem to hold the key to intuitively understanding the complexity of the Trinity. You really can't have a clear and tangible understanding of the Trinity, specifically how all three aspects can be completely different and serve different roles, all while being parts of the one true God. Um, uh, just by using the modern technology of video games as a metaphor to understand the ancient truth of God's composition and his love for all of us, uh, God is like a software developer creating a video game or simulated world. He speaks a universe into existence as Blizzard's developers wrote Halo's universe into existence with code. Um, then, as he metaphorically holds his game controller and takes human form in the game as a player would become Master Chief in Halo. God becomes Jesus in bodily form within our system, in our world. Then, through the use of various cheat codes, essentially, he who can perform miracles. And then, if you die, you simply respawn, just like Jesus' resurrection. After this, there are other methods of interacting with non-player characters, which are prevalent in The Sims, this shows us how the Holy Spirit interacts with others um, by putting information into your heart. So let's look at the being which we call God, our Heavenly Father. Also known simply as God, the Lord, is aspects of God who is all-powerful and created the entire universe and all that you see in it. Imagine being a game developer. You wrote the whole world into existence, line by line, shaped the models, placed points of light, and so much more. This is like creating a virtual universe complete with the Earth itself, at least part of it, and the Sun, at least. However, you first determine the way light will work in the game, setting points using ray tracing to cast shadows, reflections, and much more. Think back to scripture about how God created the light before he created the sun, moon, and stars. I actually have a video in this already titled, Let There Be Light. You would seem to be a god to the non-player characters in this game, if they were conscious enough to be able to understand you. And in a way, that is what God is to us. God is fully outside of our reality and created every aspect of it and gave life to you. This gives God an awesome amount of power and ability over events on the earth here. Furthermore, because of this, many games actually have a feature called God Mode, where you are just this. Now, let's talk about the Son of God. This is often misunderstood by people of all branches of the Abrahamic faith. Judaism and Islam alike view concept of Jesus as being the Son of God as blasphemy. And the truth is, they're kind of right, and I'll explain that. The issue is that this metaphor or figure of speech was not meant for modern day people. This was meant to help the people that they were interacting with on a day to day level. Um, the truth is, Jesus is not the Son of God in the sense of a human father and son. God did not get married to and mate with Mary and together with her produce a son. To suggest this would be blasphemy. In fact, that would have more to do with the ancient Greek mythology of the day 
at the time contemporary Greek mythology, where a god would come down to the earth and meet with humans and have offspring, uh, often called demigods. This is the point. The Greeks would understand this concept. Keep in mind, Christianity was originally taught to the ancient Greeks. So, why do we in this century call him the Son of God? Well, some demons called him that, as recorded in scripture. Um, after that, he repeatedly called God his Father, and a voice from heaven mentioned Jesus as being his Son. It appears there is something to this, but then again, that is a big one. We are all sons or daughters of God. All humans are created in his image, and Jesus was a human being. The, the body was a human body. The term son of God literally just meant some person. Yeshua, or Jesus Christ, is the part of God that was in human form, physically walking on the earth with us throughout the Gospels, where he reiterated and clarified his message, as well as in the Garden of Eden and in South Furnace in Babylon years earlier. This is the form that God took, being born through a virgin, to ultimately sacrifice himself on a cross for our sins. So what about the Christ? After all, we are talking about Christianity here. We are all Christians watching this video, most likely. And if you're not, that's cool, just keep listening. So what's the deal with the whole resurrection? Can video games explain this? Yeah, easily. Christ was born to a virgin and killed on a cross. Then he died, placed in a tomb, on the third day he rose again. Uh, how do you think that this works? Uh, another video game can explain this in a very simple way. And you've probably actually already done this on some level. Pick a game and log in it to play. I'm going to choose Halo for this example. You have a backstory, but you don't really play through it. Uh, nobody in the game was ever shown to have intercourse to produce you, and your body is literally just made of computer code written in C++ and other languages, such as C-sharp. You miraculously appear and begin your work. You know the script, you know what you must do, and to be honest, I don't always enjoy every aspect of the video games that I've played. The one great example is done with the flood on Halo CE. That is my least favorite part, but I have to work with it anyway. This is a weak comparison to the agony that Jesus felt uh, on that cross two millennia ago, but he did what he needed to do to accomplish his goal. And spoiler alert, he wins the game. If the Father is fully outside the system, the Son, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, is the part that is fully within the system, fully human, but still fully God. This is analogous to your game character or avatar in any game you play. It's fully you and fully part of the game. And in a way, you are fully in the game also. You are also fully outside the system in the same manner, at the same time. This is a sort of dual existence you experience. You actually experience what your player model encounters through the screen and controller. In this way, Christ logged into our world through a virgin in Bethlehem and played through all the tedious aspects of day-to-day -day lives and got many people to hear what he had to say and ultimately sacrificed himself on the cross to cover our sins. Now, Jesus was able to perform miracles. He pulled a practically unlimited amount of fish and bread from a small basket that had just a few pieces in it. Uh, the Bible records 5,000 men there, but given that there were women and children there, we can assume this is likely more like 20,000 people being fed out of one small lunchbox. Have you ever done anything like this? Possibly. This is like using the unlimited items code in a video game, like infinite ammo in a magazine for a gun and golden eye, or a similar game. For example, you have a 30 round magazine and you continually fire for minutes without ever running out. Um, or like uh, having a small amount of oil for a lamp and it continues burning for eight days. So another point, Jesus was able to disable the weather settings and turn off a storm with one command, be still. There are several games which I have actually turned off the weather um, just because it was being a nuisance and I wanted clear weather for the game. So here's a big one. 
uh, also been killed in a video game. And I'm sure you have too. What happened? Did it actually hurt you? Was any of the NPCs in the game actually capable of causing any real harm to you? Or were you totally fine and your avatar just respawned a few moments later? We simply respawn back in the game after an annoying preset amount of time, right? Yeah. That's what God did. After his avatar, Jesus, was killed and buried in a tomb, the body disappears, as evident by the burial wrapping still being there undisturbed, and he essentially respawned three days later, defeating death, which is so real to us in this system, showing that God is outside the system, and that Jesus is God. The human body named Jesus was God's in-game avatar, of course. Fully him, but also fully something outside the game. This being was fully human, just like you and me are in this physical world. However, it was also fully outside this world and in full control of it, just like you or I would be to a non-player character in any video game. So, now that explains how we can view Jesus as a player avatar for God, existing in the world that he designed. How do we explain Jesus praying to himself? That's a little trickier, right? Um, it would be best to view this as being for our benefit. Is there any time you've ever played a video game where your player model or your avatar has spoken directly to you? While this is rare, we only have a small handful of times you ever saw Jesus praying publicly. And I can also only think of a few times that this has ever happened in a video game, but it does occur. Um, your character turns to the camera and starts giving you information or commenting on the game, breaking the so-called fourth wall. Um, one example of a video game is where whenever you just let the controller sit playing Conker's Bed for a day, this little squirrel will turn to the camera and ask you where you're at, even though that is you in the game, which is like it's talking to itself in a higher realm of existence. This also explains the why have you forsaken me comments during the crucifixion. Um, as sometimes video game characters will knock on the screen, as I've already pointed out, and ask where the player went after a lack of input via the controller. Now, a uh, something that's a little more confusing, but a little more uh, everyday life. The Holy Spirit, what is that? No, we're not talking about ghosts, because this is actually real. This is the part of God that communicates with humans on a personal level through your conscience. This is the part of God that lives inside all of his children. The Holy Spirit is a more difficult aspect to understand, but in many ways it's actually the more familiar aspect of God in our day-to-day -day lives. The Holy Spirit interacts with us and gives us information regarding what God wants for us. We are completely free to ignore this advice and follow our own will, but God knows what is best for us. Depending on the game, you can feed information or commands to non-player characters in the same way, which they may act on or simply choose to ignore do whatever they were doing. They are their own person after all. One shining example of this is in a game called The Sims. In this game, you click on a person and give them a command. The task is simply added to a list of things the Sim wants to do. You can place a computer in their home and tell them to learn a skill or get a job with it. But they may simply choose to play a video game, which is fairly meta. Then they freak out when the repo man comes to take their possessions. This is one way that disobedience to God affects us through our own choices. This is how God is the Holy Spirit aspect of the Trinity. He's not actively creating, he's not design mode, as what we would call God, and he's not physically in front of you as Jesus. But this is the part of this is the part of God on a level of reality that non-player characters have a hard time comprehending. He's there in you, literally into the code of your being, but also far outside of our world, beyond your comprehension. If any of you have ever played any video games where you can advise non-player characters the best course of action, and they simply ignore you, you know how frustrating this must be for God, but he still loves us all. 
the more you obey God's word and follow his instruction through the Holy Spirit, the easier it becomes and the more holy you become. Holiness is closeness with God. The ultimate goal here is to be one with God, not literally to become part of God, but to be in communion with God. And the Holy Spirit is the essentially a data bus that facilitates this connection. Think of him as the cable or the wireless transmitter between the controller and a console where the non-player characters are receiving input from you. That's kind of what the Holy Spirit is in this case. So what's the conclusion here? Well, as a video game controller or a video game player, you can be like the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ very easily. In fact, your character can even pray to you in some situations. Uh, if you are the game developer though, you would also be very much like God to the non-player characters. So now that you can fully understand the Trinity with no problem, try reading the Bible again and see if it makes more sense this time. In fact, you can actually understand this more being a Trinity yourself in a video game, assuming you know how to write code. You'd be more of a binary situation with just playing the game. You can have your developer console up to perform simple tasks, including cheat codes, such as turning 140 gallons of water into wine, making infinite amounts of fish and bread come out of a small lunchbox, or simply turning off weather settings. Uh, these are things that a non-player character would perceive as miracles, because they have no comprehension of how you're doing that. You're walking around the game you created, talking to or interacting with other characters um, as a person in the game. Most of the time they ignore your, situ your suggestions and suffer the consequences, while you are left to just watch. Furthermore, you would have some knowledge of where the game is going, and this gives you the ability to predict the future as you can see all of the code from beginning to end. You have free will, the non-player characters have free will, but there is a designated script, sort of, that will be followed. That's what the game is, it's not really choice there. And you have to do things within that for everything to go well. Now, you have a better understanding of the Trinity. Please, as I said, go reread the Gospels, and you will have a fuller understanding of the Scriptures, knowing what God is to humans. Don't forget to like and subscribe this video and channel respectively. But more importantly, don't forget to read your Bible. That's far more important than any YouTube channel. And that's all I've ever today.